Good morning, YouTubers. Well, I've been watching, I got up early this morning to watch the uh, Netflix documentary. Uh, what was it called? Can I Tell You a Secret? Okay, and I'm going to do a quick review on it. I'm not going to go into choreography or makeup or all the other different things. And It's in two halves. The first half has been dragged out badly. But the second half is the interesting half where it talks about the guy who actually got nine years in prison for being an internet troll. Now, he clearly did have previous for hacking people's Facebook accounts from his mother's flat, okay, on the internet, they're typing away. And they came out with all kinds of uh, things in mitigation, like he, he had various things wrong with him and he was a loner and all kinds of stuff which was presented because he, he was actually charged with five counts of something, trolling, and uh, he pleaded guilty. And the, the, in their defence, they said, well, look, this and this and this. And uh, <clears throat> one thing that bothered me straight away when I was watching it, as they were presenting the evidence, they had all these girls crying, but they presented this evidence that this guy had been trolling them for years and he'd been hacking their Instagram and Facebook accounts and then making up new accounts in their friends' names and then bad-mouthing each other to other friends and causing mayhem for individuals, for the victims. Of course, nobody, nobody likes trolls, for sure, because they are manipulative, sly, conniving, scheming people who cause a lot of trouble behind the scenes. They're so devious. Well, they think they are. But one day, the troll says, Matthew Harden. And the victim goes, Matthew Harden? Who's Matthew Harden? <laughs> Up Matthew Harden comes, like I said before, he's got previous for hacking Facebook accounts. He was in the local newspaper. Um, hacks, trolling, da da da. And they went, oh my God, that's him. That's the guy who must be trolling me. So they got him to the police. They sent us to the police. And um, straight away I said, bollocks. Nobody, nobody would troll someone for a number of years and then put forward the name Matthew Arden if that was actually Matthew Arden that was doing that. So that's the first alarm bell that went off for me. ding a ling a ling a ling a ling Someone who hates him, who's been trolled in the past, has done this out of malice. That's my first thought. The second alarm bell was they said, oh, look, on one of his troll accounts, he accidentally went live. And filmed himself and then put his thumb over the over the camera as the camera the sand. He went, oh and then we've got him, we've got him, look, we've got him. Well, if he'd been engaged in, in trolling and arguing years before, it's possible that someone had that video and they uploaded it to the troll accounts. Because if I was a troll and I'd accidentally gone live <laughs> with my face on a fake account, I'd go, oh shit, delete. You would think, wouldn't you? Now, to me, that I'm not saying it is, but it could be that he just messed up and caught himself right out. Or it could be that evidence was planted. And people say, oh, how can evidence be planted? Evidence can be planted in a lot of things. Take this, for example. This is a cat brush. This is, this is covered in fur from our cat, okay? But imagine that's someone's hairbrush, and this is actual hair from someone's head. And someone could take a bit of that and they could plant that under a body's fingernails at a crime scene. And so CSIs will come along and they'll take samples of that hair from under the fingernails, won't they? And they'll go away or DNA profile it and they will then put someone at the crime scene who wasn't there. So yes, evidence can be planted. And it's got to be very careful how you go around looking at the evidence. That You've got to follow the evidence for sure. But then you've got to take into account, could that evidence have been planted? Because it can be planted. It can be planted, and it does get planted. I know some bank robbers, for example. I'm just going off the course now. I was in jail with some bank robbers, right? And they had genuinely robbed this um, armoured car. And they got away with all the money. Right, and uh, they'd burned everything that they were wearing and they got changed and they'd just all scarpered and disappeared. Now the police knew 
well, they suspected who it was. And so they'd gone round and searched this house belonging to one of the people they believed was in. Was... Anyway, they found a balaclava in a drawer. So the police took the balaclava, just stuck it in a pocket, didn't take it as evidence. You know, because you have to put things in a bag and seal them and sign them. So they took the balaclava, put it in his pocket, went down to the armoured car and dabbed the balaclava in the broken glass on the windscreen. Then they put it in a bag, zipped it up, sealed it, sent it off to the lab. Now what's the lab going to come back with? Lab's looking at the refractive index of the glass. Can they match it to the windscreen of the armoured car? Yes, they can. Positive. So the guy got convicted. They all got arrested and they got convicted on that one bit of evidence, which was fabricated. Right. Although they did actually do the robbery. They did do it. <laughs> so the police would justify themselves that, so well, we needed evidence, we didn't have any, so we fabricated some. Mm, we're well, getting into dodgy ground now. You really are. Because they might not have done it. Just because you're convinced that you think they did, they might not have done. Anyway, fabricating evidence in trials is really seriously bad. And it shouldn't happen. So the guy pleaded guilty to five counts of... Uh, I don't even know what the five counts were, but let's just say trolling, stalking, whatever, causing... And uh, because he had uh, various things that he'd been diagnosed with, they'd made all kinds of excuses for him. And uh, when it came up to sentencing, he didn't even have a trial. W would he actually have been convicted in trial? I don't know. But then the judge turns around and gives him nine years. Nine years for trolling. Wow. And as one of the women said, um, wow. The police have gone from there's nothing we can do, we're not interested, there's not enough evidence, to nine years. And you think that's bad. So, I mean, in this day and age, where everyone's on the internet pretty much, you know, we really need a system where abuse of this kind can be detected really fast. And um, obviously we can't go around giving everyone nine years, because if everyone got nine years for internet shot, they're not five and a half like Alex Belfield. Prisons would be full of internet trolls, wouldn't they? That's ridiculous. There wouldn't be any room for rapists and murderers and things like that. So you'd either have to build loads and loads more prisons, or well, you've got to get realistic with internet trolling. Internet trolling, nobody should go to prison for more than uh, a year, two years max, because you only serve half in prison and you serve the other half in the community but under probation. So if you really wanted someone to go to prison for a year, you'd have to give them two years, but no more than that. No more than that for a non-violent offence. I mean, I've been trolled. I've got this troll on my back now, you know what I mean? But a few of them. And uh, I wouldn't want them to go to prison for more than a year. Pointless. Absolutely pointless. There's no. It just costs the taxpayer money. It doesn't do anything. Once they get out, they can be monitored. They've got a record. They've got a history, you know, and they can be grabbed and have their electronic devices um, inspected every now and then, shall we say. I'm sure they'll find ways around that as well, but we've got to get realistic, we've got to get realistic, we've got to put a stop to internet trolling. Nobody has got any sympathy for internet trolls, but you know, you've got to get realistic with the sentencing. Because it is a non-violent offence, it just does people's heads in, and it does, it does, genuinely. It's, it's bullying and, and stalking and the likes, and no one will give any internet troll any sympathy, for sure. There's no point in uh, spending a fortune locking them up for nine years, because that won't do any good at all. Probably turn them into serial killers, and when they get out, they'll go around killing everyone who they thought was irresponsible. Yeah, I don't know. But it's not going to be good, is it? Anyway, that's my review of... Um, can I tell you a secret on Netflix? What do you think? Because they're the main bits that stood out to me. If anything, if anything, what did come out of that interview was, I think the CPS should have another look at the case. That's what I think.